Hello everyone. Today will be a short video about how you can improvise when there's no other choice. Honestly, a folder. I considered the folder with the files for this video lost for over a year and recently found it by a random coincidence, so I decided to write a script and, in general, make a whole video out of it. At the end of last year, some good friends from a local service center approached me with an interesting task. There is a washing machine, large, industrial, and its front panel broke down. Here it is, by the way, right in front of you. This front panel has been repaired multiple times, and, for a while, all of this even worked. But then it broke down again, and it can no longer be repaired. The problem is that the washing machine is old, although it's good and by no means cheap. Therefore, as I was told, it's impossible to find this spare part for sale. Something needed to be done, and done urgently. I looked at this poor film and realized how much time the master had wasted on its restoration, and decided that the only rational solution in this situation was to make a new panel. Then we thought a bit more and realized that the board could be thicker, and it doesn't necessarily have to be made as a film. After considering all the nuances, we concluded that a standard 1.6mm fiberglass board would fit just fine. I didn't see the washing machine itself, but the technician gave the go-ahead, and I started copying. The issue was that this panel is larger than a standard sheet. A 4. And my printer, which was ultimately used to print the board, can only handle up to A4. I managed by deciding to cut the prototype into two A4 sheets. Print them, and then glue them together. Let me tell you, it's quite a challenge considering the board is double-sided. I also scanned it in parts. The scanner also doesn't support anything larger than A4. Well, enjoy the process from here on. After creating the board in the editor, there's some more magic. And here it is in our hands, with all the cutouts, and so on. The board should have buttons and LEDs. In the original, there are pads on the front panel itself and conductive contacts on the board. I will install regular low profile buttons. By the way, they are more reliable. A big problem arose with the LEDs. Ideally, I should have used SMD. But I needed to deliver this board as quickly as possible, and we don't have any electronic stores here. It's almost impossible to find SMD LEDs of the required size from local vendors. And I soldered all of this at night because it needed to be delivered urgently that same night. Some might think that I'm just making excuses for the tech perversion that will follow. But in reality, everything was exactly as I said. And the tech perversion lies in the fact that I ended up sticking here. 3 mm LEDs, but with the top cut off. They're under a polyethylene panel here, so this ugliness won't be visible to the human eye. And finally, I covered the buttons with masking tape and coated the board with varnish on both sides. I also had to make a couple of ribbon cables and solder them to the board. It looks pretty good, actually. Did this thing work? It did work. But unfortunately, the guy who will definitely watch this video forgot to send me a video of the washing machine working. But the washing machine worked and obediently followed all commands. It's been over a year since then, and so far, everything seems to be fine. Maybe this video wasn't worth posting, since I'm even too lazy to film such repairs. But, this is different. This method might help some of you someday in creating control panels for any devices. If you need a really thin board, there's always the option to use flexible foil clad fiberglass. I have it too, but at that time, the sizes of the fiberglass in my stock were smaller than needed. That's all from me. 
Don't forget to rate this video, and in the video description, you'll find other useful links. Well, as always, this was Kazin K with you, and until next time, goodbye.